Hi, as we continue with our series of mini lectures, um, we are studying aberrations, in other words, how an imaging system, such as this zoom lens here, uh, does not perfectly image objects onto the image plane over here. Um, and we've learned about what are known as the third order or Seidel aberrations. Um, and that's essentially when a ray comes in at an angle normal to the, or at an angle to the normal to the lens surface, um, that it doesn't behave the way that you would expect. Remember, we can define a focal length in this lens by 1 over the focal length is equal to the index of refraction minus 1 times the difference between the inverse of the two radii of curvature of the surfaces. Uh, paying attention, of course, to our sign conventions, as we learned several weeks ago. Remember also that this angle we define is determined by the curvature of the lens surface, such that a small theta would be a flat lens, and a large theta would be a, a highly curved lens if the ray was coming in along the optic axis. And, and the Seidel aberrations essentially are due to the fact that the praxial approximation, where we say that, that sine of theta is pretty much equal to theta, does not hold uh, as theta increases. There's another type of, of aberrations that's fundamentally different than Seidel aberrations or third order aberrations, aberrations from violations of the praxial approximation. And these are known as chromatic aberrations, where chromatic is, is essentially color. And the reason these come up is if you look at the lens maker's equation, in other words, let's just expand this down here. In any kind of real material, non-ideal material, it turns out the index of refraction is a function of wavelength. Um, it can vary either a lot or a little. And in the graph here, we show how the index of refraction might change for two different types of glasses, one represented by the solid line and one represented by the dashed line. And we see that the index of refraction is higher for blue wavelengths, uh, gets smaller for yellow, and even smaller for red wavelengths. Um, and this is the typical behavior of different types of optical materials and optical glasses. And the curvature of this, how much the variation is between the blue index of refraction and, say, the, the red index of refraction here, um, this difference, delta n, determines what's known as the dispersion. A highly dispersive material has an index of refraction that changes a lot as you change color. A less dispersive material, such as shown by the dashed line right there, has less of a change in index of refraction as you change color. And this idea of dispersion is very, very important for many things, particularly sending data through, through glass fibers, as the whole Internet runs off of. Um, but what we see, in fact, is if the index of refraction is a function of wavelength, and then the focal length of a lens is itself a function of the wavelength. And so that we would expect different colors of light to focus in different places. Um, and this is, in fact, the case. Let's pop our curve up there. And because the index of refraction of blue light or green light is greater than that of yellow light or red light because of this dispersion curve, we see that the focal length is shorter or decreases as the color of light shifts toward the blue. And we can see that graphically in this image right here. You can see the focal length of, of the lens here for red is longer. As we get to green light, it gets shorter and shorter for blue light. And I'll warn you that this, this is a highly uh, exaggerated picture. The focal length changes not nearly this much. But we can see that, in fact, if you wanted to find where the image location is, it depends on the color of light coming across or coming through the lens. Uh, it's generally true that for higher index glasses, indices of something like 1.7, 1.8, and a glass that would have a high index of refraction like that, relatively speaking, the dispersion is generally worse. For glasses that have a low index of refraction, 1.4, 1.5, they generally have less dispersion. And the way we classify the amount of dispersion um, related to the, the glass type is something known as the Abbe number. And it's proportional to the inverse of dispersion. In other words, a low Abbe number means high dispersion. A high Abbe number means, means that it has a low dispersion. And the way we classify the Abbe number is like this. We take the index of refraction for yellow light, uh, subtract 1 from it, and divide it by the difference between blue and red light. And if there's a very large difference here, of course, the denominator is large and the Abbe number is small. And you can see that, in fact, uh, these numbers get smaller as the glass becomes more dispersive. 
the way optical engineers use this information is when they're designing different types of lenses, really high quality lenses, they can choose different glass types that have different Abbey numbers. And generally, we present the index of refraction as a function of Abbey number in a graph that looks something like this. Uh, it may be a little bit hard to see on the video. This is the, the website that this came from down here. But the index of refraction of the glass is given on the vertical axis, while the Abbey number is given on the horizontal axis. Uh, that number there is 95. It goes all the way down to 20 here. And each of these little dots, there's one right there, there's one right there, is a different type of glass. As you can see there, there are many, many different types of glasses. And what you see, as a matter of fact, is that as the Abbey number decreases, the index of refraction generally goes up. In fact, these glass types make a curve that looks something like that. Um, and you can see that higher index glasses have a low Ab lower Abbey number and generally higher dispersion. So let's do a simulation in Optics Lab, and I hope that this comes through on the video, but I think you'll be able to see at least some of the things. But let's do a simulation of a lens of two different glass types, a high dispersion glass, and then we'll do a low dispersion glass next, and look at how the chromatic aberration changes looking at lights from a point source. 